Hey guys, it's Kay, I hope you're all well. Now in today's video, we're looking at the latest software upgrade to your NVIDIA Shield TV. Now if this video is not for you, don't worry, my next video is about a great TV app I found and I will be reviewing it in the next video. So do keep an eye out for that review. Now this 9.0 Shield Experience upgrade is available to models 2017 and 2019. Now this is a pretty substantial upgrade as we're actually getting Android 11 on our NVIDIA Shield TV and it looks like there's some great features that have been added and in this video I'm going to check them out. Now if you haven't had the notification upgrade on your NVIDIA Shield, I'm going to show you how to upgrade it manually through your system settings and show you if I come across any system problems and hopefully how to fix them. So in that way when you come to upgrade your NVIDIA Shield you won't have any issues. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now when you first switch on your NVIDIA Shield, you should see a notification here. And it will tell you that there's an upgrade available. Now if you don't see the notification for the upgrade, you can manually install the upgrade. Just click on the settings cog and scroll down to device preferences and then click on about and select system upgrade. And then finally click on check for upgrade. Okay, once you have the notification, you can click on details and you get the following screen. So let's see what's new. And of course the major thing here now is we've got Android 11 on the Shield TV. And the update also includes new privacy features and a new default keyboard with the built-in text-to-speech capabilities. And it looks like we've got an ad for GeForce Now. Stream your PC games at 4K HDR on your Shield. Now I haven't personally tried this yet, but I can assume it's pretty good as the technology is pretty mature now, as I get a great experience with the PlayStation Now streaming service. Let me know in the comments below if you've tried GeForce Now, and if you think it's worth it. Ok, moving along, we also get some new and upgraded apps. So of course we get Apple TV in 4K Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Now of course you can only take advantage of this if you've got the capable hardware. We get Google Play Movies and TV with Dolby Vision support. And we also get a new app which is IQIYI and this apparently contains most popular Asian movies, television shows and variety shows. So guys let me know if you want to see a review on that app. Anyway moving on we've also got some new games in the form of Apex Legends, Emergence, Far Cry 6, Life is Strange, True Colors and last of all one of my favorites Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege Year 6 Season 3 and other enhancements include Android security patch level September 21, we get added support for aptx compatible Bluetooth headsets and we get the option to automatically disconnect Bluetooth devices on sleep, also the option to match content audio resolution and we get the new Gboard keyboard option. We get a new energy saver setting for additional power customization and they've added Stadia button support to Xbox, PlayStation and Shield controllers. And finally we've got some additional bug fixes. Ok so what I'm going to do now is download and install the patch. And I will speed up this process. So in real time terms the patch took around 5 minutes to download. And of course this time will vary depending on your download speed. Now once it's downloaded it will check the file integrity and then you'll get the button to restart and install it. So I'll speed this up again. Now this process did take another 5 minutes and then it starts rebooting. Again I'll speed this up. Now this is probably a good time to make a cup of tea. You'll then get the option to enable auto upgrade. I always do a no to this as I always like to know what I'm installing on my hardware and then just click on OK. Now to check that we're upgrading to the latest version we go into settings and scroll down to device preferences and then click on about and then just scroll all the way down to Shield TV software version. And as you can see we're on Android version 11 and software version 9, which is exactly where we want to be. Now when I went back to my home screen I had another notification telling me that I had an update to my remote. So this was an update from Shield Remote 1 to 1.15. So guys definitely make sure you upgrade to this version if you haven't already done so. Now once that's complete you should get the following message telling you the accessory has been updated. So let's take a quick look at some of the new features. Now the new Gboard keyboard feature shows up when you type in a new search. So for example here I'm in the Google Play Store and if I type in the search it brings up the keyboard and from here we can see that we've got the new voice input button and if we click on it we can input our voice search. But of course first we've got to allow Gboard to record media. So just click on allow and you're good to go. And then in the G keyboard click on the mic and then I'm going to search for Puffin Browser and as you can see it finds it straight away. Now if we go into settings we can also see the other new feature. Just scroll down to remotes and accessories and there it is, we've got disconnect Bluetooth accessories on sleep. We can toggle off input devices including controllers, remotes, mouses and keyboards. 
and we can also toggle audio devices including speakers, headphones and headsets. So as you can see guys, it's a pretty comprehensive upgrade from the last version and it's definitely worth installing for all the new upgrades you get. Now I'm going to continue checking this version out and if I see any problems, I'll let you all know. And if any of you guys install this upgrade and you come across a problem, please do let us know in the comments below. And even better, if you find a solution, please do include that as well, so we can all benefit from it. Now as we have got a new version of Android installed on our Nvidia Shield, I thought I'd add a bonus section to this video showing you how to speed up your Nvidia Shield by adding an SSD hard drive to it. This will enable you to get the most out of your Nvidia Shield TV, and that's coming up right now. Now today I'm going to be looking at installing an SSD to my Nvidia Shield Pro. So you might be asking why do you need an Nvidia Shield TV external storage device? Well basically in the newer version of the Nvidia Shield we lost the SD card slot. So on first glance storage options look limited. But thankfully the Shield TV Pro still has two perfectly good USB 3 ports. Previously I have used a USB thumb drive but I now want to boost the performance. So I'm going to be using an SSD and I'm going to use this, the Sabrent 2.5 SATA hard drive SSD to USB 3 adapter. Believe me that's a bit of a mouthful. But who cares as long as it works. So as you can see the important thing is it's plug and play and it's hot swappable. Now for the SSD I'm going to be using this Kingston 240GB drive. This should give my Nvidia Shield a boost in speed and space. So up close you can see the Sabrent cable is going to fit perfectly to the SSD and the USB 3 port of the Nvidia Shield. All that remains to be done is connecting the Sabrent cable to the SSD. And like it says on the box it's just plug and play. Perfect fit. Now we just need to connect the other end to the USB 3 port of the Nvidia Shield, but there's a few things we need to do first before we do this. Now the main thing you need to do is connect your hard drive to your PC or Mac, and using a disk utility, format it to XFAT. Now if you miss this step out, you're going to get the following error message when you connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. So once you've done that, you can safely connect your SSD to your Nvidia Shield. Now back on the Nvidia Shield, once you power up, you'll see a notification, and it should say USB Drive, tap to set up. Now if you do that, you'll get the option to browse, set up device storage or eject. I'm going to scroll down and select set up as device storage. At this point, you're going to need to format the drive. Now give it a few minutes to do its thing. Now I'll speed this up for your convenience. So when it's complete, you're going to get two options to move your data now or move it later. Now this will move the majority of your data from your Nvidia Shields drive to the SSD drive. Now I know I haven't got much data to move across, so I'm going to do it now. Again, give it a few minutes. Now it says data has been migrated to the USB drive, but to check, we're going to go into our settings and scroll down to device preferences and then scroll down to storage and there you can see we have our SSD with 236 gigabytes and if we select it we can see how the space is distributed on the drive as you can see mine's quite empty so I better get busy and start filling this up anyway guys if you enjoyed this video please do give us a like or consider subscribing as I do tons of videos like this every week